This is a certified hood classic. Another one. All these, we have the meats. There it is, a little late on the gavel, but we got it. Uh, welcome. We got a case time. Uh, it's uh, Hira, 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 We've seen this courtroom a few times, not a, not a lot, not a ton, but a few times. And uh, it's always uh, a good time with this judge. This judge seems pretty fair. Oregon. Did you know Sweet Tea lived in Oregon? I did. Why did I think she lived in the Midwest? I don't know. Hmm. Is that where you think that all lesbians live? Is in the Midwest? Oh yeah. Is that why? Is it yeah? Oh, it's uh, in the Midwest. It's a, it's a breeding ground. <laughs> for lesbians don't go to the Midwest, kids. You'll turn into a lesbian. It could happen. <laughs> we love our lesbians. We love everybody. We're a loving bunch here. But these people that we're going to see step in front of this judge creed. Not yeah. so loving. A couple of PPO type deals, and then we're going to have a run in with a neighbor mm -mm. that doesn't work out too well. By the way, in two hours, there'll be a premiere on Credence and Mikey of an incredible case we covered several months ago before Ooh. we really started doing big things around here, Creed. So oh. All right. I've revisited that for uh, TPO Tuesday. Okay. Make sure you're there for that. You do not want to miss this. Creed, you'll remember it was the guy who had the problem with his Amish neighbors. I mean, they were building pallet shops and <laughs> there was sure big do. shit everywhere. Yes. And Oh, absolutely. His mom had to go to the insane asylum for two weeks. And, yes, I do. I definitely yeah. remember that. The pallet warehouse. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, that that is up there for everyone to enjoy, uh, especially all you new folks. And uh, any of you uh, Midwestern lesbians, too, for you as well. <laughs> Top quality. <laughs> Nathan Matthew Ledger, 24-7-6-5-7-3-H. This is a motion to terminate a personal protection order. Mm, terminate. She's president of the courtroom. She's in pro se. The respondent is in the courtroom as well. The respondent's guardian and conservator is also in the courtroom. Could you state your name for the record? And E S S E N M A C H E R. Correct. D O R E E N. Correct. Judge is showing off. Don't please raise your right hand. Yeah, good luck to everybody. We're on just the outer. We're like a. What is it? Torcon? I believe. Yeah, score of two today. Um, we won't see that. About... Good luck to everybody else. Out or about. Well, we're waiting. March 6, 2024. Oh, one day before my birthday. A request ex parte for personal protection from the petitioner. The court reviewed the petition and on the same date had authorized the personal protection order uh, against the respondent effective that day to continue to August 6, 2024. Subsequent to that, the respondent had filed a motion to terminate the personal protection order dated March 11th. <laughs> Two days so before my birthday, boss. Hearing this morning is to determine whether the personal protection order is to continue. The burden of proof or burden of persuasion rests upon the petitioner as to why the personal protection order should be granted. So, Ms. Butch, why do you believe this personal protection Ms. order? Ms. Butch? Continue? They just said. Um, a few years ago, yes. um, the SM makers and Ledger. Um, moved in next door to where I live. Pat Cora. Um, shortly after that, looks like a movie set. You know, Nathan has um, constant, pretty much in a consistent manner, um, come into the library. Used to be at my residence, but would always come into the library and. Um, wanted attention, asked why I would not talk to him the same way I talked to other people. What? She works in the library? Um, she looks like a librarian. 
not suggestions, but just remarks. And, um, I'm sorry. Could you give me an example? Um, at you. one one time, he asked me if I was wearing a bra. Nah, I'm not. And so, if anybody was asking. Man, that <laughs> hot librarian, baby. I'm hot for librarian, not hot for teacher. You got a bra, on, baby? Look, uh, how do you use this here Dewey Decimal System? And uh, <laughs> what are you wearing a bra today? <laughs> God, I love it. Oh, oh, the that's librarian. That's, that's great. Uh, yeah, bring on the rain, please. Less of the just, just, just everything is just green. Making me nuts. God, damn. Famous Amos? Hmm. He was a Cajun, lived in the South, and lived in the swamp. Hunted an alligator for a living, I believe. Because they are. They, Allegedly. I was polite. Right. And then. <laughs> I was polite and said, yes, Victoria's Secret. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I'm wearing a bra. <laughs> I told you I was here. <laughs> Why don't you talk to me like you do everybody else, Fletcher? Yeah. <laughs> Fletcher boy, thank you for the two bones and a late fig. You're not even that late. It just started six hey, months ago. That's all right. Time, don't tell him. And then he um he came to me and said that he had feelings for my daughter, um, who no. he had no had had no uh, contact with besides her coming over and saying hello to him a couple of times as he as she was coming in the house. Um, so that, at that point, I knew I had to break off everything with him because he just, you know, so I told him to leave me alone, leave my family alone, stay off my property. Um, but he still could, of course, can continue to come into the library, which he did. Um, this went on for over a year, um, you know, where he would just try to engage in conversation with me, but I, I was not, you know, responding or very shortly, I would not give him any response. Um, and then the last time, so then he's been now, he's been going to people that I work with to ask them to talk to me and that I should not be mean to him. Um, it's embarrassing. It's, it's beyond, it's just, it's just ridiculous. Um, and I hope that's him sitting back there in the back. <laughs> It'd be know, great if it was. It's just gone on way too far. Um, I, I've done everything. I've been nice. I've been rude. I've been downright mean, trying to get him to stop. Hey, no. to leave me alone. And I cannot, I can't get him to stop. I can't get him to, to, you know, figure this out. Thank you. Gary, thank you for the buck 49. She uh, she just wants him to stop, Mikey. Just just stop. Just stop it with the... Look, man, you know, when you're a hot seductress, by the way, thank you, Gary G. Um, when you're a hot seductress uh, in the library, Sammy can uh, attribute this. Sammy said uh, she's also a librarian. Um, you know... You, you have that thing, you know, guys come in there to look up something important. You s smell the old pages. <laughs> it gets you turned on. I get y'all hot and bothered. I see what uh, this guy's problem is, but maybe she should stop dressing so sexy. <laughs> Moving to the Midwest. He's uh, getting ready to tell us, boss. Uh, get ready. <laughs> Wow, they got a panning camera here at the I, her, I, I, Huron. I never asked Miss Butch if she was wearing a bra. I did tell her that her daughter was free. I never stated that I had feelings for her. Um, I just, I'm yes, for neighbors and everything, but I've just been nothing but a friendly person, Miss Butch. And I just, I'm just confused about why she. And a protection order. I mean, yes, I, I've been to the library, but that everybody has the right to go to the library. Um, I have been going to the council meetings because it's it's a it's, which didn't like the fact that I was with the money she um she didn't like being recorded. Um so that's where we had another problem. Um 
I don't feel like I'm harassing Miss Butch. If she feels that way, uh, that's awfully kind of her. But I, if she doesn't, if she doesn't want to talk to me, then I can I can respect that. So it's, uh, it's unfortunate. Um, but I just I just don't want a protection order. I mean, because that wouldn't be fair. Let's say, for example, if she went, to, if I'm at Walmart and Miss Bush is at Walmart, then I would have to leave. That wouldn't be fair to me. So, and as my guardian here with me, I can tell you why. Uh, but uh, I'm just saying, I just, I don't, I don't feel like this protection order is necessary. Mm. I would not talk to Miss Bush if she wishes me not to. She has stated to me, she has stated in her um, statement that she come try to contact me numerous times to talk about me, but she has not. She's messaged me through Facebook twice. We've been there since 2018, and she has never told me this is the first time I'm hearing about the policy. Had she told me all this, I would have told him, stay away from the library. Don't even go to the town meetings. Is this his mom? He likes to go out in the community. He likes to um, maybe observe things and, you know, he doesn't have anything else due to his history. He just wants to be part of the community. Due to his history. He might be going in the wrong way, but I told him that. He is not to go to the library anymore. He is not to engage with Miss Butch. Our driveways are five feet apart. That's how close we are. Oh, I know. Um, so I, he knows that he's been, he does not want, he did not want this protection on him. There's one plan. You get the final say because you are the petitioner. Let's go ahead. Um, I love the I numbers. Problems. Thank you. And I tried to respect that which is why it's taken me so long to bring this about because I thought we could work it out on our own. I don't want there to be bad feelings since, you know, we are within a few feet of each other. And if I see them out, you're raised to be polite. So, you know, you can wave to people as you see them in the streets. That does not mean I want to be his friend. And I I can't seem to get that across to him that, you know, it, but it concerns me that he, he doesn't understand why I don't talk to him like I talk to other people. Um, there's just two, a lot of red flags that have been coming up. And the last one, um, when he was in the library, you know, and I told him to leave me alone, but, you know, he just needed to just stop. Um, he said, I didn't have to be a bitch about it. And it's like, everything seems to be escalating a little bit. And that's when I decided that it was time to put this in order because I, uh, I'm afraid it's going to go a little bit further. Thank you. Uh-oh, she thinks he's going to try and to hear everyone you know. regarding this the court has also the opportunity to review the petition and the respond the responding documentation as well and court does not grant personal protection orders willy-nilly matter of fact willy-nilly who's he recently with, with recent uh, they, they lip read uh songs and pretended it was them i'm pretty sure that's who we're talking about uh uh, Mrs. Avery. Um, so he asked her. He he asked her. If she was wearing a bra. Um, was kind of mad. Uh, I guess she talks to other people in different ways. Not you know. But it, it does way. seem like maybe he is a known creep in the yeah. area. Yeah. Though, if that is the mother, which I think you might be right that that's the mother. She said, "If I'd way. known he had asked her about her bra, mm -hmm. I would have told him not to go back to the library." Right. And now she did also say something about his known past as well. So mm -hmm. he just wanted to fit into the community. Yeah. So I, I'm guessing, you know, he's yeah. professed his love for the lady's daughter. Right. He he's probably the only grown adult in the library. 
um, at any <laughs> given time. Unless you're, there's only two people, and there's little kids and homeless people. Yeah, uh, that's about the only thing I ever see inside the library when I go. Yeah, uh, Madonna Harold, thank hey. you for come on. Madonna's back. Good to see you again, Madonna. Case law, there has to be specific reasons why denials are are made, as well as reasons why personal protection orders are granted. And we've seen a flurry of a, a number of these requests come through, domestic or non-domestic. I think so. Something. And yeah. It's just a new day. It's a new day because we have uh, different laws, different perspectives, and and obviously the ultimate goal here is harmony in the community where we don't have issues like this. Um, just speaking personally, uh, the respondent in this case is, is a frequent individual that visits the court. No issues, no problems. He's entitled to be here. He's welcome to be here. He's never a court watcher. That. Court's never, had, no, court has never had seen, no, court's never seen, had seen anything that would be in, indicative of ooh, a little concern here. However, when I read the petition and I read the allegations and heard what I heard today. Thank you, Chris. By the way, got to be a little bit of a shakeup on Friday. I also haven't told uh, Mikey. We might just be just just like Friday doesn't even exist. Uh, awesome. maybe. We'll see. Um, just FYI, though, Saturday at an unknown time. As to, yet to be determined. Yes, because it's going to work something out. We'll be uh, members only. On the main channel. And thank you. Uh, one one more person to join us. That's going to be on Saturday. This At week. an unknown time as of yet. Later afternoon, I'm, I'm guessing. Not at 9 a.m. Not early in the morning. <laughs> but we'll see you on Saturday for a special uh, members only that, that might be open to all of them. I, I don't know. And, and Friday just might not even exist anymore. I, I don't know. We'll tell you later about it, though. <laughs> we got to figure it out. <laughs> Despite the denial of this case. There's truly a valid reason why this personal protection order uh, should be uh, continued. <laughs> Jim. There has been repeated contact. Imagine, imagine you find out he's back on those computers trying to look, you know, at some good stuff and get worked up. And that's why he's going up being like, uh, maybe. <laughs> but it seems like he goes and hangs out at any public place he can get into. He's at court watching court. Yeah, he he's going to the public library, hanging out in there. Yeah, I court he might be. Maybe he he maybe he's practicing. Yeah. He's going to launch a channel soon. <laughs> he just might. Officer Porkchop reporting for duty. The repeated contact has been of no more than harassing at best. It could be annoying, but under the statute, harassing and. Hearing the, the statements, I'm, I'm continuing the personal protection order in this case. It's effective until August. And I'm hoping during that time frame, things can calm down. Parties can continue on with their lives. And notice when I entered the order originally, when I put in a period within sight of, the court had scratched that out. And the reason for that is because your neighbors. I couldn't imagine a situation like that. Their neighbors? Really following. And so, there's a valid reason for the personal protection order. All right, so that—that's why she just said there in her her closing statement, if you will. Um, that's why she had said that you know we see eye to eye, we see each other often, and things like that. So that makes sense. So it's not just at the library. Oh man, mm. he, he just wanted uh, the ability to go back to the library, I guess. But uh, deny. Yeah. Gonna have to go one uh, one street over, I guess, or one one uh, uh, city over. He's going to find somewhere to hang out, like the public yeah. works, maybe. <laughs> go, you go there. Stephanie Sucrell, twenty-four seven six five zero. Oh, he turned into a robot. Wow. For request of a Gerald. Protection order. You are Carly Prill. Yeah. And you are Stephanie Sucrell. Yes. Prill ain't that his last name. First. Uh, yeah, P R I L L. Uh, is this one of his kids, Gerald? <laughs> with the same last name. The question is can the court preside over a hearing such as this? I am stating for the record that I do not associate with, and that's not because we decide to do that, but we really don't know each other. 
I don't associate with Carter Brook Krill. I never associated with Stephanie Sue Krill. We've never had any conversations. We've never had any family gatherings. We've never but they done are related. Where hmm. I have been a part of at least that Krill family and my Krill family. Is there any objection to the court proceeding under that basis? Interesting. Ms. Carly Krill first. Any any problem with that? You're shaking your head. Is that a no? I do not have any problems with okay. that. Okay. And Stephanie Sue Krill. No. Okay. Could you both please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or interesting? I don't think we've ever come across it. We've seen judges like kind of excuse themselves because of I do. Maybe it's such a small area he can't excuse yeah. himself. No, maybe that's possible too, I guess. The there was a personal protection order request that has been filed by Carly Krill back on February 28th. Court reviewed it. It was an ex parte request, which means she was requesting it on her own without notifying the respondent. And the court denied it and issued an order as a result on March 15th. Two days after my birthday. A hearing was scheduled requesting that the PPO be authorized. Neither party showed, and the court dismissed the action. For whatever reason, despite yeah. no new petition being filed in this case, it's back before the court. Mr. Tools? Can something change? Um, so, I, so I've gotten a call from the clerk's office. And okay, so actually, I should start. So the day before, I had gotten a call from the clerk's office. I had went to have the papers served to her. Oh, there she is. Because when I was reading the nice hair. Like the words on the paper, it said that it had to be served at least a day beforehand. So I went to them three days beforehand and they took it. And then I got a call from the clerk the next day saying that it had to be at least a week and to come in and schedule a new meeting. I see. Okay. And that explain, I'm not sure why they noticed that that day. All right. We will proceed. The burden of going forward in this. Okay, now, thank you. Ms. Krill, explain to the court why you need a personal protection. Well, I don't really feel safe with my mother such me having the ability to contact me because of anything that's happened in the past. And I do have a police report Let's and the shower. text messages if you'd like to see those. But I just don't really feel safe, especially so we do not live together. I moved out in so this is against her mother? Was April of twenty twenty? I I think so. so. They're all related, both yeah. sides. So I mean, it is kind of fair then. They're all related. Well, I, I don't know if that's hot, JG, but uh, teach uh, their own. It's fine. That's that's whatever. But yeah. By the way, Emily went to get her hair done yesterday, and she said, "Don't you know it's been like a month? I've had it up and." It, I guess there's so many different hair colors happening that it was super. I said, I thought it looked fine. I didn't even know you had an issue with your hair. Go for a month. <laughs> Some things just. Grace, you know, I don't look I don't at you. Thing. What are you talking about? <laughs> I just, I never, I didn't notice. I thought it was fine. I only see in the like, dark. And she's like, do you see all this? And then she looks over here and she's like, oh, yeah. I was like, no, I didn't. I, I didn't know. <laughs> Not for me, but yeah, for the family affair happening here. This is interesting. Three. And since then, I feel like I've been better off without having much contact with her, but I don't really know how better to explain it other than just the <laughs> emotional aspect of having the same contact with her. And then recently, I had pneumonia for a week, and so I didn't go to school for that week because I had a hard time breathing. God, you guys thought she was 50. She's in school, you guys. I don't know what kind of school. I'm concerned about me not going to school, and I explained to her it was because I was sick. And she kind of dismissed that I was too sick to go to school, and she ended up showing up at the house and demanding that I go with her, or else she will call juvenile hall and have me taken away. So that's what the police report is about because I had. You are 18, correct? Correct. And you were still a senior in school? Correct. Well, there you go. She's a senior in high school. It's only 18. They call that candy floss where I'm from, Bill. So, 
other than that, your allegation of this contact regarding going to school, what is the other re what are the other reasons you're requesting a personal protection? Just every conversation we had is sort of her trying to get me to change how I Because the shower didn't take Voss. The shower didn't take. That was a great episode, by the way. <laughs> the shower didn't take. I just took a shower and I was like, I ain't got time to do anything but get my ass out there and work. <laughs> Flat hair or not. It's a day of beautiful hair, though. She's got this bird's nest happening here. She looks bold, by the way, when you look straight at her. She's not. It's she had it pulled hair. real tight. Yeah, we got pink hair, don't care here. In order, even though I feel like I've displayed <laughs> responsibility in multiple areas of my life, and it's just sort of turning into this thing where I, every time I make a decision, she has something to say about it. And it's just getting to the point where I can't deal with that anymore. Your mother has things to say. Oh my God, I can't believe that. Any allegations of salt or injury anything like that no. just annoying you are <coughs> <God bless you. laughs> anything else before i go to the response um I guess just to bring up again that I do have screenshots of all the things she said to me. If you would like to see them, so give, give me a few examples of what she said to you and when. Um, on March 18th of 2023, she says, You're a brat, don't talk to me anymore. And I said, I know I am. I didn't plan on it, as in referring to, I didn't plan on talking to her anymore. And she said, I wish I didn't have you. And I said, You've made that clear since I've been born. She said, Good. So this is from last year? Correct. Anything, back quite last year. Okay, anything most recent? The most recent thing would be February 28th. That's the day that she showed up at the house just after I called into school and told me that I had to go with her. Otherwise, she was going to call the police and have me taken away. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Your response, please. <laughs> It is true, but the reason I did do it is because <coughs> Carly left home because I tried to commit suicide, and she's living with my mother-in-law and her two sons. Yikes. And they are very dysfunctional in their living. And Hot I on Kittle Black. aware of everybody oh. and their living situations because she lived with her father and I for the last 17 years and has never experienced. She's young and naive in her thinking with relationships of other people. That was so our girl. The time she was saying, hey, hey, hey. She left, she started missing school, and it didn't just start in December. The first month she went to school, she missed three or four days because of a field trip. She didn't take her homework with her, and I had let her know, you're doing extracurricular activities. School comes first, then your activities, then your job. Well, she kept getting everything mixed up, and I let it pass, and then she, she missed another day, and my girlfriend seen her in town, and I said, Carly... Why are you not at school? I called you in sick. Well, that doesn't mean I'm not sick enough to do something else. So this mm -hmm. was a couple months, and then I said, that's it. She's a good student. She's graduating salutatorian of her class. But she has her priorities mixed up because of where she lives and the people that uh, tell her all things all the time. Not See, all the you time, met? To let her know things about her father and I that aren't true. And so she's listening to all this stuff and never asking me. It's it's, it's the court watcher. I actually think it is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. And he's probably wearing an order, but for seeing him right there, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. All right, so it's uh, she's hearing things about her mom and dad that mom says aren't true, but uh, maybe it's uh casting them in bad light that's why she wants her to get out of that place mm -hmm. whoa um, amazon what? girl hello <laughs> that's ted we got a case channel wednesday 5 30 east 10 more people joining us what a remarkable situation to live in thank you and my god look at mayor right behind you with five to the main channel <laughs> That's 15 if my math is right, which it may not be. So I checked that for me. 
quit. I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, 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 Fifteen. I knew yeah. it. Anything. She just assumes everything. And I had tried to commit suicide a year ago, and I was under enormous emotional stress. No. For almost till August. Are you receiving support for this? Yes. Okay. I was misdiagnosed. And I was being treated for bipolarism. Anybody wondering why the uh, why the judge doesn't associate and hang out and spend a lot of time with this side of the family? Yeah, there's a wondering. probably a good reason. I, you know, I'm just you know, <laughs> creed, creed spitballing, but I think he may be onto something. <laughs> it might be. Oh, Mayor, fate of the year 2024. Don't don't need to explain. And that I was on psychotic drugs for almost 10 years. Hell yeah. And when I tried to commit suicide, I Party got off the drugs. But as a result, I had developed tremors from the lithium. And so they gave me another great movie medication. And I got side effects from that. I've heard enough regarding you mean the uh, documentary about Griggsy's life. Is that what you're talking about? That no, one? tremors. Oh. So okay. I that was for my Ms. state of mind. Gotcha. Gotcha. Your Honor, um, so what she was saying about the people at the house that are influencing me, she's assuming a lot of that because I don't really talk to most of the people that are there i mean we live together but we don't socialize we never really talk about my mom or my dad like we pretty much stay apart for the most part like we don't really talk at all so i don't know where she would be thinking that they're influencing me so are, are you going to be the salutatorian that is correct wow that's wonderful well, this is a PPO request. It's it's a domestic a personal protection order request based upon obviously the relationship between petitioner and respondent. The burden of persuasion rests upon the petitioner to establish why a personal protection order should be entered in this case. Based upon the evidence presented, Jake. the court does not find any reason for a personal protection order to be entered in this matter. Uh oh. Denied. 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 Gary called it uh, quite a bit ago. Absolutely right. I'm, I'm not surprised there with that one. I'm not either, and I'm not surprised he doesn't have anything to do with that side of the family. Yes. People of the state of Michigan versus Dalton James Phillips. There are two files, 237029FH and 7030FH. Time of day set for sentencing. The defendant, Mr. Phillips, is in the courtroom, represented by Elizabeth B. Weisenbach, who appears by the Zoom application. Also appearing on behalf of the people of the state of Michigan in this case, Assistant Prosecuting Attorney Alexander Bahani. Mr. Phillips appeared last before the court on January 22nd. He had pled no contest in 7029 to assault with intent uh, by strangulation, as well as assault and battery. In 7030, the defendant had pled no contest to attempted malicious destruction of police property and false report of a medical emergency. <laughs> Mr. Nathan Lake has prepared the preset report. It's dated January 22nd, tw I'm sorry, February 5, 2024. There have been letters supplied to the court as well. Letters from Emily Shetterly, Hunter Lenz, Karina Miller, Jared Phillips, Anthony Phillips, Ryan McCoy, Sarah Clark, and Savannah Clark. There was also a Mike Hunt random that uh, was supplied to the court as well. Hugh court Janus. <laughs> and there was also a sentencing video that was prepared in this case, and the court reviewed the sentence. Ms. Weisenbach, I'm sorry, it, it's it's called sentencing video. Ms. Weisenbach, have you and your client had the opportunity to review the pre-sentence report? Yes, Your Honor. Are there any additions, deletions, corrections, or objections to the report? Just a couple of um, corrections. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, front page, where it says employed. Um, he is still employed at Far Farner, I can't pronounce it, um, paint and drywall. That also appears in the section of employment on page uh, 12 of the body of the PSI. It's spelled correctly there, and I can't pronounce it. Um, but he was not terminated. Because he was arrested, he just stopped putting in hours because he was arrested. So he's still employed there. I'd like the court to note that. That's one he, correction. He didn't get fired. He just well, didn't show up anymore. Thank you. Um, and that's stop, in both of those places. Stop going. Um, the other correction is, one second. 
a lot going on in her okay. house. Okay, um, page 11 in the family section. The Almost the bottom middle of the page. All right. it's, a little, it's a little awkward. His grandmother is deceased. She doesn't have an address. She doesn't have a phone number. I think that should be removed from the record. It's a little awkward. That is definitely a little awkward. I'll give her that. <laughs> Call my grandma. She'll tell you. What was the grandmother's name? Oh, Hugh oh, Erection. Thank you. I just think that a better representation of the record. Um, and then finally, just to remind the court, page 12 where the employment section is it says termination reason reason that should be stricken that box should be empty there is no termination he's still employed there so it's kind of double we'll that. thank you i have no other corrections for the court oh miss weisselbach any objection to one pre-sentence investigation report mm -hmm. covering both files no Great. mr phillips any objection to that as well that's sure. it and uh any other additions, deletions, corrections other than what your attorney state? No, sir. Thank you, Mr. Bahani. Any additions, deletions, corrections? Nothing noted, Your Honor. Thank you. And any objections scoring the guidelines? I apologize for not asking. None from the people, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Weisbach, any objection scoring the guidelines? No. What would you like to say on behalf of the defendant before the court impose a sentence? Thank you, Your Honor. In my interactions with him, although I am the third attorney, I have found Mr. Phillips to be very pleasant to work with. And I appreciated that he understood that I was ill, well, not ill, but that I'd had some surgery planned and that um, unfortunately he did have to have his sentencing adjourned. And I appreciate his patience on that just because he um, has been anxious to be sentenced and, and proceed in his life. So anyway, with that being said, um, he does have a good support system. He would be returning to Bay City to his home with his fiance. He still is employed, as indicated to the court. He would like to be in a position to financially support his children and also spend time with his children. His hope is that this court would allow him to be admitted into the um, drug court, the recovery court, just because it's, it's in the PSI. He's not had a treatment opportunity in his lifetime. The records were searched in two states and more, whatever. And they couldn't find anything where he had had some substance abuse treatment. That's really important to a person being able to succeed. So um, as the court can see, as a juvenile, it was noted he was basically Awkward. left unsupervised. He gathered his record and here we are. Um, again, no substance abuse treatment to help a little guy out who was struggling with his life. Little so guy. he's gone five years at this point with nothing, nothing at all on his record no, until the relapse. And the relapse is very simply... It was due to stress. There was jobs that he had to have in order to um, be able to make child support. And when the child support would take up most of the checks and there was nothing to live on. And it was just a vicious cycle of, you know, you start to spiral into why am I going to work? I got to pay this child support. I don't have anything else to live on. Yeah, that's why you go to work. And then he started to relapse, drinking, and unfortunately the drug use, and here we are. But there is a light at the end of the tunnel because he was able to piece together on his own a very good support network. I believe that there may be some people in the courtroom. How about today. a good uh, internet network? The first couple of letters that I've submitted to the court. I think that the letter from Emily. Are we, uh, are we slightly creed flaming here? By a chance? A little bit. A little bit. At uh, first I thought it was her, but no, then I saw it, you it, wing I chungy up it. there. It's it's just pegged at, at a one. I, there's no VPNs on. There's nothing. So this is how what? we handle this. This is the great part, though. This is when I get to look at everybody and say, see my hair? I got a shower. Jesus Christ. I wasn't expecting that, Creed. Um, uh, Creed will be right back, by the way. Um, but this is the chance for me to remind you guys. There will be a premiere that you'll be redirected to as soon as this show is over. An incredible case that we covered some time ago. Damn, I look old close up. Uh, some time ago where it was a PPO with a neighbor who was an absolute, well, you know what? But so was the other guy. So it was a two-way a-hole, but they're Amish, and he called them evil, and he made a giant sign that said, evil Amish live here. Allegedly. Uh, yeah, it's still like two bars just jumping in and Yeah, out. but you look way greater. Oh, thanks. Well, for a second, you did. You're 
It's still it's full. I mean, there ain't nothing there. Well, Early we don't have much sergeant left. in the Air Force. Deal with it. Uh, she's an excellent writer. I was very impressed with this letter. It it gives the exact um she had great penmanship. Doing well. He can do well. Um, he's a good person. Like I said, my interactions have been very pleasant. He's been um he was very kind with regards to my surgery being um upcoming. And if he is able to, he can through substance abuse treatment assistance do well in the community. Again, he wants to be able to work with the kids, see the kids, and those kinds of things. So I would ask the court to consider him to be allowed into the recovery court. I understand that the initial um, initial Bob, response, right? that was a flat out no just because of the guidelines. That's understandable, but this is now something before your honor. You can actually make this decision to give this young man the opportunity to have, for the very first time, this little boy treatment before sending him off to prison. So he would ask you to consider that very strongly in his favor, what he had been able to pull together sitting in jail. He got these folks to together to help him. I saw um, that show. Letters, et cetera. So I think that that shows a lot of initiative. And I think that the court um, would be up. I think the court would speak well to how he would do in sobriety court. I'm not sobriety court, a recovery court. This if you were little able. boy, tiny boy, baby boy. Thank you. Well, Ms. Weisbach, the, the jail sentence credit, 269 in the first file, 249 in the second file. Is that accurate? I usually rely on what the jail tells me. <laughs> so. Oh, find out, Mr. Lick. So uh, 29 files can be 283, and the 30 files can be 263. Thank you. Ms. Weisbach, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys real quick. Glad Creed paused it right here so I could say this. It's going to be a great day. If you're not already ready for members only on Saturday, that's right. Members only on Saturday for the main channel. Make sure you keep an eye out for it at the start time of that. Also, 3 p.m. Eastern today. Great video coming up for you. You do not want to miss it. The evil Amish have attacked this man and his property, sending his mother into a spiral that ends her in a mental health institute of higher learning. Um, I'm still pegged at a one. I we're I I don't know if we just keep. Uh, I mean, there's only like eight minutes left, so I, I well, know. that can turn into fifteen. It's just yeah. So I don't know. Um. Today, I come before you to accept the consequences of my actions. I didn't come with an excuse, a stop short of justification for my behavior. I came with. I mean, this is during a creed frame, just so you know, during a creed frame. Um, 505 at 17.9. Oh, so. And, and it's still showing just right there. So, I don't know. I need to face the music. But I would like to tell you that I need help. I've had a serious alcohol and drug problem all my life. If you look into my record, every crime I've committed revolves around addiction. I've never asked for help from anybody. And I've never gotten it. So I figure I won't get it if I don't ask. I'm not here to tell you that I want leniency or mercy. I just want help, however it may come. Um, I have now the longest in my life sober. However long I've been in jail, is the longest. I've done over 50 recovery Congrats. meetings. In the jail, I have like a sheet along to give you. Uh, I have a support system. I have a recovery coach. I think that now I have all the tools for success in my hands. I just hope that it's not too little too late. That's all. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Do you have any comment relative to the behavior in the jail? Uh, in the jail? Oh, uh, not necessarily. I wasn't good. I'm not proud of it. I don't have an excuse for it. I don't have a reason for it other than alcohol and drugs. I was out of my mind. I wasn't myself. It's not me. I think that you could ask anybody that knows me if I act like that on the regular, and I don't. Well, I don't have like an excuse to give you. Okay. I'm, not I'm, embarrassed. Embarrassed. I'm embarrassed by it. I'm, you know, that's, I'm going to live with that forever. So, When was the last brush you had with corrections folks? I yes, think 2016 or 17. I, I did oh, okay. I did a count year. So whatever, whenever well, I'm just up. talking about the behaviors in the jail. Oh, uh, I've only had two write-ups since I've been here. Very good. Thank you. Well, honey, we have to be
Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I hope the court had the opportunity to view the video that was provided with the sentencing memorandum because it, it gives the court a, a, an almost bird's eye view of the events as they unfolded that day. The 911 audio of an individual who was calling that was Mr. Phillips' neighbor, who was utterly terrified. And her son was taking video of the incident as it's taking place in the middle of broad daylight in the village of Owendale with Mr. Phillips assaulting a woman in the parking lot. Then the when that woman goes downstairs to assist the person who's being assaulted, he chases her back up the stairs and assaults her too. Damn. Definitely an individual who's not in his right mind, Your Honor. And despite his statements to the court that he's on the mend and he's sober and he wants to do better, what he did that day can't be excused because he almost killed her. And the court got to see the interview that the deputies had with that individual while she described his behavior as he strangled her and bashed her head into a countertop inside the apartment. None of that's. Hey, Craig, stop that real quick. And frankly, the. Uh, let's see. We'll do this. That way, I'm sure we've probably backtracked a little bit. Who was calling that was Mr. Phillips' neighbor, who was utterly terrified. And her son was taking video of the incident as it's taking place in the middle of broad daylight in the village of Owendale with Mr. Phillips assaulting a woman in the park. in there, bud. Then the, when that woman goes downstairs to assist the person who's being assaulted, he chases her back up the stairs and assaults her too. This is definitely an individual who's not in his right mind, Your Honor. And despite his statements to the court that he's on the mend and he's sober and he wants to do better, what he did that day can't be excused because he almost killed her. And the court got to see the interview that the deputies had with that individual while she described his behavior as he strangled her and bashed her head into a countertop inside the apartment. None of that's excusable, Your Honor. And frankly, the violent nature of the defendant's crimes preclude him from the recovery court. This is a 10-year felony. He practically strangled Not practically, he did. He strangled a woman. And the recovery court is not the place for him. He appears before you, Your Honor, with two prior felonies and seven prior misdemeanors. He's had the opportunity to change his life, to use those incidents as a wake-up call for sobriety. But instead, he continues to go out and commit violent crimes. And that's what he did on the day in question, Your Honor. And therefore, we're asking for a sentence for the higher end of the guideline because incarceration is where Mr. Phillips belongs, not back in the public. I agree with that one. Well, the court has had the opportunities I've stated, not only to see the video and, and, the, and the jail reports, which is the negative, certainly, but the court has seen positive, too, with the, the letters that have been submitted. There have been a number of letters that have been submitted, the court's reference to it, and the court considered all of that in fashioning an appropriate sentence. In this case. There's no doubt that there are two prior felonies and seven prior misdemeanors. This gentleman's only 25 years of age. Oh, wow. I'd like way older than that. Yeah, I did too. On the flip side, reviewing the video, obviously it's it, it, it's just like one person, then another person. You see another person in the video. You see another person here before the court. And clearly substances were involved on, on the day in question. Uh, so that's being considered as well. Uh, what I do know also is uh, there are two prior convictions for domestic violence one in 2016 the defendant served 93 days in jail in 2018 a second domestic violence and he served 65 days in the county jail and so this is not his first rodeo so to speak when it comes to engaging in these types of behaviors with with other individuals that may be close to him I failed to mention as well, uh, Mr. Pahani, this is also a victim's rights case. Did the victim wish to speak? She did not, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. So that all plays a part in this for purposes of sentencing. And, and when I when I looked at the defendant's history, and, and I, I give him credit for seeing what the issue is and what the need is, that's something that he's going to have to explore because the guideline range in this case is a minimum 1938, 0 to 11 in the other file. Considering history, considering the behaviors involved, 
it will be the sentence of this court in 7029 that the defendant be committed to the Michigan Corrections Commission and place in the commission's custody for a period of minimum two years to a maximum of 10 years credit for 283 days previously served. Crime victim's assessment of $130 will be uh, provided. Attorney fees are waived. $68 in state costs will be ordered. On the assault and battery, $50 in state costs and 93 days in the county jail credit for 283 days served. Finally, in 7030, the count one malicious destruction of fire of police property in the attempt. The sentence of the court the will be fire truck. 263 days in the county jail credit for 263 days served. Crime victims assessment of $130 will be ordered and $68 in state cost. Count two, false report of a medical or other emergency. Court will sentence the defendant to serve 93 days in the county jail. Credit for 249 credit. I'm sorry, 263 days credit. $50 in state costs will be ordered. All these sentences shall run concurrently with each other. So basically one year. I need to inform the defendant Pretty the much. Need to appeal. As long as he He's behaves. Financially, so. able, financially able to provide counsel his own choice. Court will assign counsel for a public expense. He's to initial the receipt and questionnaire form requesting the assignment of counsel. Those must be executed under oath and filed with the court for the court. Hmm. Well, at least he's got to serve some time and he's not out just doing probation and all that shit. He's sober for the longest he's ever been. That's a good point, too. That's that's a good start. Let's hope he keeps it that way. Wow. Yeah, that's a that's a bad dude. Straight up bad dude. Um, sorry about that. I don't, I don't know what, uh, yeah, it's weird. It's been doing that a lot, uh, outside of, uh, court and, uh, outside of chase. It's been doing that a ton just during, we got a jackpot. It's so weird. It just pegs out. Like it's just at the one and I don't know. No, just, uh, it's going to give up soon. Science. Yeah. Um, all right. The, uh, Midwest express. <laughs> I see what you did there. Fletcher Boy, thank you. Gary G, Alex Mac Attack, uh, Madonna, thank you. Appreciate that. Chrissy, of course, a known gifter. Uh, Kiernoth, Amazon Girl, the big amount of uh, new members. Appreciate that a ton. Uh, Mayor, right there with a bunch of gifts as well. Appreciate you guys. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll be back at 405 East. Oh, probably a premiere today. Too. Yeah, yeah, premiere happening in just about an hour from now. You're going to be redirected there. So it's simple and easy. All I got to do is get there, hit the notify, hang out, go watch something else, but you'll be back. Don't worry about that. And so will we for uh, Taco Tuesday, mm. 405. Make sure you're there for that. It's going to be delicious. Uh, bad weather coming, by the way. Everybody be careful out there. If you're in the path of any storms, we need you around, baby. So stay safe, stay hard, stay tuned. Because, you know, we'll be back. Allegedly. <laughs>